the conference on the move was wonderful. It was a really good opportunity to meet other people who were looking for information and stories about Northern Ontario and as it turned out Manitoulin Island, although I wasn't aware of where we were going, so it was a really great surprise <laughs> to, to arrive at Manitoulin Island. And the wonderful welcome from everybody, in particular the First Nations people, and I really enjoyed hearing their stories. I think the welcome on the Aboriginal Special Day, Day of Recognition, was really wonderful. The, the lovely way that the Elder talked to us and explained the ceremony and the importance of the connection to the spiritual and the land and the stories and the ancestors. And I guess the most thought-provoking thing was connected also to the Global Savages um, presentation, was the idea that every decision is made thinking seven generations ahead of the impact and seven generations past of what would the ancestors think before considering what is the right thing for now. And I think if we all made that sort of deliberate attempt to connect ourselves always to the to the concept of the future and the past, then perhaps our decisions would be different and perhaps we would have less hurtful, um, often unwittingly hurtful decisions that are made. Yeah, so I think that was the thing I took away most, um, uh, most deeply from, from meeting the First Nations people. And the Global Savages production was extraordinary, particularly because I realised that um, the people were presenting from their place and uh, I could have perhaps seen them in Belgium or somewhere else but we were fortunate to see them within the context of the stories and I think that made it even more powerful. So it was beautiful. So my experience uh, as a general practitioner is of learning uh, slowly about the local people in the area that I work in, in the Northern Territory and also of being a, a participant in the introduction process for medical students into the context of the Northern Territory. So even though it's not where I'm from, it's a place I've lived for a long time now. And I developed a very strong relationship with a, um, a woman from uh, the local area, an uh, Aboriginal woman, who together... Um, I supported her with what she felt she needed for medical students to understand. So I, I was able to come to the orientation and debriefing sessions with these students with a medical impression of what the students might need. And she came with the very important um, introduction and uh, discussion of the cultural components of the medical students' experience. And we together supported students for a number of years in their experiences in remote communities. And these communities in Australia are populations of 800, maybe up to 2,000 people. They're often accessible by a small plane uh, or by, by road by a long time. <laughs> and uh, they're a very um, strong experience for um, medical students who perhaps have grown up in more metropolitan places and certainly perhaps more monocultural or not so much monocultural in Australia but um, places that are perhaps more international um, in their experience and the remote communities are a very different place. Um, people live in extraordinarily difficult circumstances of poverty, of lack of access to simple things like supermarkets and shops, um, and the impact of the conflict between traditional practices and uh, modern life is very strong. So medical students were often having quite life-changing experiences and required some opportunity to reflect on that. So together, she and I were able to support those students and that was a very um, forming experience for me as an educator to recognise that 
we need to understand our limitations and we need to work within our understanding of the context when we're uh, educating. In your view, why is it better for medical students to understand the culture that they are serving in? I think firstly, um, what, I've, what I think is that we need an experience that shows us that our assumptions are based on our culture and our experience. And when we go into a place where people behave differently and we're asked to question, we have to question our own assumptions. And it's not until we're in a place where experientially we do that, that we realise that um, it's important to understand someone else's perspective uh, and that our assumptions about the other person might be incorrect. So I think the first thing is to actually understand that there's difference. Um, and then after that, it's, uh, I guess, an, an importance to understand how to listen and how to um, effectively uh, communicate across that difference. It's a two-way thing. The journey towards assisting people to better manage their health and to live a life of a better balance, if you like, across the spiritual, physical and mental, emotional domains is really about sharing and as a doctor I bring a health understanding which I want to share but I'm only able to share it to the point that I can communicate effectively and people will take what they wish from my information according to their experience, according to their need, their perspective um, and the, the longer I'm a doctor the more happy I am with that, that understanding because the responsibility for how we improve our health rests with the individual um, in the context of their understanding of who they are and, and who they will be, um, which is about family and community, and much more than about uh, me solving a problem as a doctor.